support the real, so I'ma tune in every day. Way up. <laughs> you are now turned into Angela. But I call her Ye. <laughs> with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. And it is a Wealth Wednesday. Yes. Up here on Way Up. Also, I feel like um, this smoke outside. I I know. In New York. It's affecting me. Yeah, New York is, um, they're saying right now, is at the top of the list for the world's worst air pollution. Yes. So there's been all this smoke for for, uh, more than 100 wildfires that are burning in Quebec. And honestly, outside, it's, isn't it crazy that it traveled this far? It is. Yeah. Yesterday when I, we were out, I thought it was like fog. I feel like I was in L.A. again. Yeah, it's that bad that they've actually canceled outdoor activities and events mm-hmm. yesterday for students. Yeah. So anything outside school, di- the school district announcements were that they're not doing those things. So That's let me crazy. tell you something. I've been like coughing. Yeah. Somebody I was with was coughing. They thought it was pollen initially. They were like, oh, is, is it the pollen bad here? Yeah, isn't it? And <laughs> like, listen, no. Not like New York has had the cleanest air, but, you know, we're in New York right now and it's definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take us back to where were we just now? Um, take us back to Philly. Yes, <laughs> yes, please. Yes, we go back to Philly. Please. Yeah, please take us back to Philly. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we have a great show today. It is Wealth Wednesday now. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about this one because okay. we are going to be having the CEO and president of Essence, mm. Caroline Wanga, is going to be coming here. Dope. And she's just an amazing person yeah. in general, like when you get to hear her speak. But she used to be um, the head of DEI for Target when a lot of companies didn't even have DEI. Mm, yes. And D- DEI is diversity, inclusion. Um, equity, inclusion. Equity, inclusion. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so she'll be coming by. But, you know, Essence Fest is coming up. But it's more than just Essence Fest. Mm. They also own Afropunk and Beautycon now. <gasps> I love Beautycon. Yes. And Essence Studios. And so I'm just excited for her to be able to talk about all of those different things things um she took over i was at essence fest last year i'm there every year yes you are but you you had a, a big part last year at essence fest Ooh, i was tired but i also <laughs> and we'll talk about why that was a special time for me in particular last year when caroline gets here but mm-hmm. she's going to be joining us today for wealth wednesday okay and we also of course start the show every day with shining a light shining a light on somebody who's done something positive somebody who's impacted your life or maybe a story that you saw in the news and you were like this person's amazing so we shine a light on the those people and you guys shine a light on them 800-292-5150 is a number call us up who do you want to shine a light on this morning let's get this wednesday started off right it's way up with angela yee we gonna light the block up i'm gonna shine i'm gonna shine turn your lights on y'all turn your lights on spreading love to those who are doing greatness shine a light on them shine a light on them it's time to shine a light on them Yes, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Good morning. Good morning, and it's time to shine a light on him. And today, we are going to shine a light on Pastor A.R. Bernard. We just met with him mm-hmm. up here on the show, but he is at the uh, he's the head of the Christian Cultural Center. Okay. But he has a lot of amazing things going on, and I love this because he has a background in finance and banking. Mm. And what he's doing in East New York, which is in Brooklyn, is he's building up like a billion-dollar development that's going to provide affordable housing. Housing for oh, people. Oh, nice. Yes, so that you have some place to live because, you know, when it comes to real estate right now, right. things are pricey. And we all know that when people don't have housing, adequate housing, that uh, trickles affects, down. Affects everything. Yeah. Every part of your life. Imagine you don't have some place great to go lay your head at night. Mm-hmm. Or you don't even want to be at home. Or yeah. you don't even have a home to be in. Yeah. You know, that's not an easy situation. So it's not just about the church, but it's also about making sure that people are taken care of in the community. I love so that. So imagine being able to build your own community. I love that. That's amazing. What's his name again? Pastor A.R. Bernard. Okay. Yeah, I All love right. that. All right. Now, who do you guys want to shine a light on? 800-292-5150. Hey, Trav. You? What's up? I don't know if we should talk to you, Trav. We didn't see you at the Roots picnic. Where no. were you, Trav? <laughs> Listen, uh-uh. that's why I'm calling it was to put a, put a spotlight on you and my new service girls. I was running so late on Saturday. I did not get down there until like 8 o'clock, you know. Well, oh, so you didn't come to see us, but you came to see Luzi. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're not slick. You came to see Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. Actually, I left, I left before Lauren Hill. 
got up there. I was, I was actually like having a very bad day that day. But I didn't get uh-huh. down there until like 8 o'clock. Don't you make me feel bad for you now? I was really trying uh-huh. to make it feel. I really kept telling everybody like, yo, I have to be down there by 6.45 to see you, you know, man. I didn't get to make it. All right. Well, we, well, anyway, Trav, we would love to shine a light on you today, but we're going to take that back. Maybe another day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to sound like, oh, my girls on the lip service. Stephanie. Oh, no, no, Trav. Uh, 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 no, Trav. Don't even try uh, it now. <laughs> Bye, Trav. <laughs> Bye, Trav. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Brian, who you want to shine a light on? I want to shine a light on my girlfriend, Ines. Okay. All right. Tell us why. You know, she works a full-time job, you know, that stretches her out sometimes. Mm. But she still comes home and manages to take care of her two kids. You know, I'm a busy man. I coach football and all that stuff. So when I'm busy, she maintains home, and she always supports me when I'm down. So Aww. she's the reason that the house runs the way it runs. I just want to appreciate it. You know what? We appreciate her too. That's really, really dope, Coach. We're gonna um, send thank you. you thank we're gonna send you a gift for her. Okay, some black girl sunscreen because you know it is that time of the season where we gotta make sure we protect our skin. And she's gonna love it. It's a product that I use already. So hold on the line. We're gonna get your address. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was Shine a Light on them. 800-292-5150 is a number. In case you couldn't get through, you can always still call up and leave a message. You guys have the final say on the show every single day. And when we come back, we have Yeetie. Let's talk about numbers. Ice Spice will tell you what she has accomplished and achieved. And we'll talk about the top 50 streaming artists, all right, in hip-hop. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Talk to me. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Talk to Hey, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my girl Jasmine is here from the jasminebrand.com. Yes. All right, well, Ice Spice has yet another notch under her belt. She is the artist with the most top five hits on the Hot 100 in 2023. Oh, that's major. Yes, Karma with Taylor Swift, Boys Alaya with Pink Panther, Princess Diana with Nicki Minaj. I mean, right now, that's uh, what she has going on, so shout out to her. Okay for that um, as far as the 50 most streamed rappers on Spotify mm-hmm. I think we all know who's number one on that list of course we do who Drake yes but number two is Eminem I'm kind of surprised by this Eminem <laughs> is no joke he's going nowhere and he's not even put an album out in forever and he's still number two <laughs> yes on the most streamed rappers on Spotify okay. number three is Kanye number four is Juice World, and number five is XXX Tentacion. Okay. Any women? I'm trying to look really quick. Any women on this list? Nicki Minaj uh, is number 10. Okay. There we go. All yeah, right. So shout out to her. Uh, Cardi is number 18. Okay. On the list. And I'm oh, Megan to... Thee Stallion is 46. Mm hmm. So those are the three women on the list. Gosh. I'm so. Eminem is. That's amazing to me. Mm hmm. All right. All right. Now, people are very angry about B. Simone. She's trending. Mm hmm. And that is all because of her latest post about subscribing to her close friends. She posted, if you're not on my close friends, you're not going to see much of my life during this time. Close friends, I love you. Thank for thank you for being a safe space. And then there's a link. Join my close friends now. Mm. Uh, people are very upset yes. because they feel like she's offering subscriptions to see her life after the passing of her good friend, Jackie O. Right. Now, they, uh, I saw some of the people responding. B. Simone is asking for people to pay for access to her close friends as she grieves her friend, Jackie O. How could you ever bring yourself to use your friend's passing as a means to get people to pay for your close friends? Is insanity. This is beyond low and disgusting. Mm. What do you think, Angela? Um, now, I'll, I'll read somebody in her defense. And, okay. And somebody said, y'all are really some goofies. B. Simone been promoting her close friends as paid subscription, not because Jackie has passed. Y'all should cancel yourself first, you dumb Fs. Okay. All right. Now, my thing is this. Yeah, she has always done this with close friends. This was terrible, poor timing. <laughs> Absolutely. To yeah. post something like this. And yeah. I can't say what her intentions were or where her heart is at on this. It just seemed like a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I, I agree with you. Because she did not specifically say, if you want to see me mourning my, my friend. My friend. No, she didn't. But yeah, you're right. It was just poor timing. Cause and, she, then, and she does promote this, this close friends thing a lot. <laughs> right. I think, um, and you know, she's saying, you're not going to see much of my life during this time. Close friends, I love you. Thank you for being a safe space. That was... Mm. 
you know, because she's, it seems like she's going through something right, right now. I think she is. So that's why I feel like it was an inappropriate post. Okay. I, I think um, she could have just said, thank you to my close friends. I love you for being a safe space. Left it at that. Right. Or if you want to post a link to join my close friends, just do that. Or just don't post. Don't do that right now. Yeah. yeah. It just was poor, poor timing. The timing was awful. Uh, yeah. And people were definitely dragging her. All right. Now, Hollywood and TV writers have been on strike for the past month mm -hmm. and actors have now signaled that they're willing to join those picket lines because they have their own battles. And this is something I think that was anticipated mm -hmm. that was going to happen on Monday. Members of SAG-AFTRA that represents film and TV actors. I'm a part of SAG-AFTRA because we actually had to join the union in order to be a full-time employee here at iHeart. Mm -hmm. They voted to authorize a strike if they don't reach a deal with major entertainment company studios by June 30th and nearly 98% of voting members were in favor of that strike. Mm. So we know this writer strike has been going on. It's been affecting a lot of different shows that you might love. Okay. Uh, it's been affecting award shows. Yeah, it definitely has. Right. So this is going to be even doubly uh, crippling. If actors become involved, right. For the entertainment industry. So actors are seeking higher pay in light of lower residual payments for streaming content. Same thing writers are looking for. Right, right, because there's mm -hmm. all these streaming services. Right, that's been uh, there's no precedent for that mm -hmm. prior to this, and so it's not like you're getting the money from the reruns and syndication and all of that. Right, um, they want more generous studio contributions to their benefit plans, and the union is also seeking limits on self taped auditions for actors. They said that's become a massive daily uncompensated burden on the lives of performers. Now, I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. The whole you know the self taping and how it's a kind of a, a bit much for them. Yeah, I didn't know you got paid to go on auditions. I would think that taping your audition and setting it in would actually be easier. I would think so, too. But it's but something don't we know. don't know because we're not in this world. All right. So that is uh, we'll keep you guys updated. June 30th. Um, by what's June 30th, happening? right? Yeah, with that by June 30th. OK. All right. That is your Yeeti. And when we come back, we have about last night where we'll be discussing what went down last night. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I love hearing about your dating life. <laughs> So, about last night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Good morning, Angela. I feel like these are Jasmine's dating chronicles. <laughs> yeah, they really are. So, I wanted to talk about something that... Mm -hmm. um, this has to do with last night. Okay. And it's, this is not completely what happened last night, but... Right. Um, imagine... Imagine. For the guys, because uh, the guys in the room reacted very... Uh, strongly. Strongly. Mm -hmm. When I talked about this. But when you go out with somebody as a woman, I feel like whenever I, I go out with somebody early on, mm -hmm. I try to bring like a couple of my friends with me or make it more like a... Not a date, but... Um, Going out like a... Like a, hey, come grab you drinks. Know, yeah, let's go have a drink or let's grab something to eat. Right. So it doesn't feel like in case I don't like you or in case I don't feel like, it's quote less, unquote, safe. It's not a lot of pressure. Yes, less pressure. Right. To do that. But apparently guys hate that. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> the guys in the room hated it. They were like, that's an uh, awful idea. Yeah. But I, I feel like I always do that. You are that kind. You're that. You're that girl. What? To bring your friends. Yeah. You'll go. You'll but bring not, your, but not in, you know, after I feel comfortable, then I'm okay. Right. With a one on one situation. But yeah. I'm not always comfortable one on one. Initially. It's Initially. Makes it feel safer, right? But um, according to Dan, he said, well, how do you get to know somebody? Because mm -hmm. for guys, we don't like that because we're trying to get to know you and be alone, like one on one and have those conversations. But I also feel like you can learn a lot about a person by seeing what they're like around their friends. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you definitely can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely can. What do you think? Um, I don't really bring. Um, I mean, well, let's say last night it was I, you were there on my date. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's be clear. That's why I brought it up. Yeah, <laughs> you were there. I was there. This is not the first time you've been there on a date, and I've gone out with you, and you know, mm -hmm. your guy date, and, yeah. and dates. Yeah. You know, so I don't. I guess I was gonna say I, I didn't really. I'm not a fan of it, but apparently I am. Because yeah, apparently I, you are. I, I'm like, hey, girl, what, what you what y'all doing? You gotta come. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that any guy has to like have grace for that because I don't expect him to pay for me. I don't want, you know, right, I, right, I don't right, expect right. a guy to pay for me or nothing like that. I can handle it myself because I think that's rude. I don't expect if I'm out with a guy, and I know some people do, you got to pay for me and my friends. No, I don't think so. But if so. I invite somebody, I don't look at it as a date. I look at it as more we're just hanging out. Yeah. And uh, what I also feel like is, especially, you know, if it's someone that you kind of like, 
I'm, they're going to have to be around you sometimes anyway, Angela. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. vice versa. Anyone that you're with, it's going to have to be around me sometimes. Right. So it's like you might as well. What if you don't like them? What if, oh, I don't like your guy? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm still going. You got to go. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's just like. I'm still... What if he doesn't like you? Jasmine got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, well, sorry, Jasmine. Here's the thing. The guy is going to fake like he likes your homegirl anyway. Right. And vice versa. Sometimes it's hard to, though. It, yeah, sometimes it is hard to. Yeah, don't call my friends a bozo. <laughs> don't call my friends a clown. Don't call my friends a, a bug out. Yeah, don't call my friends no names and we'll be okay. <laughs> right. All right. That is important to me. Some people are like, I don't care if my friends like you. Or yeah. Not. I like my friends to like the guy that, because he's going nice, to be around. Yeah. But not too much. Yeah. Okay? Well, not, no, yeah, not let's not much. like, yeah. Like, because like. I definitely have friends like, hit up the guy that I was dating Mm-mm. behind my back Mm-mm. and I'm not friends with people like that anymore so I had to let that go I don't like that alright well that is about last night now you know what's happening when we come back tell us a secret okay for some people this is their absolute favorite part of the show I got this idea from reading Cosmopolitan magazine <laughs> where they would have the confessions right and so people would confess things and I'd be like, oh my gosh. But these tend to be a little juicier. They are. You have some really interesting callers. Yes. And you know what? We always post these on social media and then I see some idiots in the comments like, this is all you talk about? No, this is one segment. Yeah. You post lots <laughs> on of segments the show. On the yeah, show. We have yeah. Wild Wednesday. We have amazing interviews. We were just talking about marijuana regulations yeah. with Chairwoman Tremaine Wright. There's a lot of things that happen on this show. It's not just one thing. This show is multifaceted. But this is really fun. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> 800-292-5150. Call us up now if you want to get on the air. Tell us a secret. No judgment. No but judgment. We are want to. Uh, we are going to enjoy ourselves. All right. 800-292-5150. <laughs> it's way up with Angela Yee. Judgment free zone. Tell us a secret. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee, and you know what time it is, Jasmine. What time is it, Angela? It is time to tell us a secret. That's uh-uh. right, 800-292-5150 is a number. You guys get to stay anonymous, mm-hmm. and we are not going to judge you on whatever you have going on in your life. 800-292-5150. Hello, anonymous caller. Tell us a secret. Okay, so when I was in college, I got with one of my close friends, Boyfriends two times in 24 hours. Ooh. Oh. Did she ever find One out? One time at the night time and another time in three. Uh, yes, yeah, she did find out because I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a truth teller and I can't really <laughs> lie for a long time. So I wrote her a letter oh. and told wow. her every little thing that happened. Oh, gosh. And Deep I gave details. it to her and she kind of shared it with her friends. And uh, I seen somebody else holding the letter one time and I was like, <laughs> my dirty laundry. <laughs> Wow. Well, what happened after that? Were y'all not friends anymore? Um, no, but it originally started because she just was spreading a rumor trying to make it seem like I was a bad person when I was in kind of like a messed up place. And her boyfriend was actually pretty close to me. We were pretty, we were better friends than me and she, her was, but I was angry and wanted to prove a point. So I went off and did my own thing. And huh. Do you regret yeah, I don't regret it. Oh, she's oh, no. Okay. Nope. You don't okay. regret no, it's it. It's a lesson learned. Every single thing that happened, especially when you do something so toxic, it makes you realize where you went wrong and where you go wrong multiple times in a lot of situations. Like, it just shows you things. Now, what happened to the guy? Oh, my. So, we ended up not being friends because I realized <laughs> he started acting funny. But he, tell me why. He Every single year, at some time of the year, he's always in my view. Like, Ooh. always in my view. And I don't even have him as a friend. Mm. But I'm like, yep, I know it was that good. And I did what I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Hey, Anonymous Carla, how are you? Hi. How you doing? Hey, What's your secret you want to share with us today? I've been married. For over 10 years. Okay, congrats. And I have been sleeping with my husband's cousin. Oh. For a little, well, we've known each other for a long time before I met my husband. And I didn't know that was his cousin. Mm. And I got a kid by him. Wow. So whose kid does your husband think it is? His. <gasps> he thinks it's his baby. Oh, my God. He don't know it's his cousin. Wait a minute, so you you have a child by your husband's cousin. But your, your husband, husband is raising it. it as though it's his own. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So what does the cousin think about all this? Is he wanting to, like, reveal anything? Do y'all feel like coming nope. clean? Or is this nope. to the grave? Nope. 
No. To the grave. So who, he doing what he gotta do for he doing what he gotta do for the baby. The, mm-hmm, the baby she looks like me. Okay. Ooh, honey, twin, honey. That's a twin. How close is he with she, his cousin? She, um close enough. <laughs> Do you, do you intend you intend to stay married though? Mm. Oh. Yeah. Are you still sleeping? Are you still sleeping with the the cousin? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, that's how it look. <laughs> All right. Well, this is not going to get any better, but um if Mana was here, Mana would have lost his mind. <laughs> Mana would have had a fit. And he's not here. Okay, thank you Jesus on that. <laughs> Thank God Mayna was in here. <laughs> well, thank okay. you for sharing. I don't know what else to say. Okay. Thank you. It's no judgment. So, yeah. okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Anonymous Carla, how are you? I'm all right. How you feeling? I'm good. Thank you. You want to uh, tell me and Jasmine a secret? All right. So, I'm a, I'm a chef. I, I have a family. And as far as my family know, I work every day of the week. But really, on my off days, I be with my other family. Oh wow! So you have a whole nother family, family. Uh, with kids and all that. So I, I try to keep it separate. So far, it's been good for the last four years. Mm-hmm. I'm about to turn four, and you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So wait, so you have two families. So tell me, how many kids are in each family? Well, I got three in one and four in the other. Which one is the side family? Both of them, because I have a girlfriend too. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. He did <laughs> so you have a girlfriend and two side families. Yeah, but as far as they know, I work seven days a week at a restaurant. Where is this money? Do they question, like, how come there's not the money that you should have? Well, I'm I'm, I'm like an alpha male, so I don't get questioned too much. Oh. I just, you know, I got to go to work. This is what I'm doing. Wow. And so with the girlfriend, how did she become your girlfriend? Was that after the families or was that before? Um, it was after, because, you know, I, I started dealing with her, I liked her, and she's like the only one that knows the truth. Oh, so she knows, okay. Okay. She knows, but the families don't know. Do you, are you still, do you still sleep with both of the women in the, with the two families? Is that a question? Why wouldn't I? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's going I to know. see them, yeah. No, but he has a girlfriend, so I didn't know. So, so she knows. Seven, so there's seven kids, are you going to have a family with your girlfriend? She's on a pill for now. Because okay. um, I don't, um, I think what's the name of them things that that you that you use to stop having kids and all that? The um, IUD. I didn't hear about them. Um, no. Um, um, a condom. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Now he, could, he didn't even know what it was called. Sheesh. <laughs> what's the name of them things? <laughs> Do you ever want to tell both families, you know, what's going on? Yeah, I they... mean, I am really working. And, I'm, I'm, you know, if we can all get together and live under one roof, meet both my families and my girlfriend, that would be wonderful. Yeah, because you want the kids to know each other, right? Yeah, I do. I do. Hmm. What do you think is going to happen when you, when you come clean? Wait, I got to come clean? I didn't say that. Well, I'm just saying because you say you want the kids to know each other. So at some point, if you come clean, what do you think will happen? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I do enough. I'll be doing the most. So maybe they might, maybe they might jack it. Maybe they might be all right with it. But them kids gonna be affected. Okay. Well, no judgment. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> you just stop yourself from judging. <laughs> hey, anonymous Carla, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You want to share a secret with us? No judgment. Yes. He was thinking my boyfriend for about like maybe a month, but um, anyway, so I'm a Hooters girl, so these guys came in and they were just throwing money at me, like a total of two hundred thirty dollars. So he asked for the kids, and I gave him the kids, oh. even though I had a boyfriend. But that boyfriend ended up having a girlfriend of four years, so <laughs> it was worth it anyway, I guess. So you got how much for a kiss? Two hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, nice. was it like a pet kiss or a tongue kiss? Just a peck. Hell oh, no, that's okay. good for a peck. So you do it again. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll do it again. Yeah, two and some dollars for a peck. Mwah. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, well, thank you. For sh- what, what do you think your boyfriend, you said you have a boyfriend, then what would he say? Oh, girl. He had a girlfriend of four years. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's a long time. So. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> no problem. Bye. Bye. All right. Yes. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret. Thank you guys for always calling in and trusting us to not have judgment against Mm -hmm. whatever it is you say. But you are anonymous. 
All right, when we come back, we have Yee T, and we'll be talking about Benny the Butcher. He was on with Joe Button. And imagine you have a record with one of the biggest artists of all time, and it doesn't come out. We'll talk about it. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's feeling that Yee T. Come and get the tea. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Angela. JasmineBrand.com, where we get a lot of these stories from. <laughs> yes. Let's get into it. Benny the Butcher, he was on Joe Button's Amazon Amp Show, Conversation Lovers Only. Mm-hmm. And imagine you have a song with one of the biggest artists, by the way, the number one Spotify streaming artist. <laughs> okay, so Drake. Drake. Mm-hmm. And you can't even put that collab out. Here's what he had to say about that record never coming out, Buffalo Freestyle. I was pissed, man. It's a f***ing Drake record. This for surely was my biggest record. And you went off. Real s***. And it's a record just sitting in my pocket, but I understand the mechanics of the business. I can't speak for bro and his team. You know how I, I got schedules. I'm, I might do a feature for somebody like, yo, Benny, we ready to drop this Tuesday. We're like, you ain't dropping that Tuesday because we holding off. So, you know what I'm saying? This is the biggest artist in the world, so I understand his release schedule. You know what I'm saying? It might be hectic or I understand, you know, he might have people who are like, you know, we can't drop that right now because we doing this. So I understand that. Right. Mm, okay. Ooh. The name of the song sounded kind of hot, hot too. Buffalo Freestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's from Buffalo. Mm-hmm. I listen, uh, and I mean, listen. He had been teasing it. It right. leaked online, so you can still get it. Okay, I can hear it then. Prematurely. Online. All right. Yes. And so, like you said, he doesn't think that it's Drake's fault. So there's no hard feelings. Okay. And you also got to do that because you want to make sure, just in case, <laughs> yes. this can happen. Mm-hmm. All right. Give it some validity. <laughs> Now, Benny the Butcher also said in this conversation that he was this close to having a Jay-Z collaboration. Imagine that. They hit me. It was like, your whole got an idea that he, of a song that he wanted to do with you. And I went out there and I stayed oh for three God. days. Right. I went out there and I stayed for three days waiting on a phone call. And then when I the day that I linked up with him, I'm just kicking it with him. We having drinks and him. He didn't mention the song. So I brought it up. I'm like, yo, he said you had an idea of it. He was like, oh, yeah, this is what I wanted to tell you. And as soon as he said that, somebody's like, yo, we need you. And, he, and they called him over here and he left. And we, and we never got brought up again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like two, three years ago. You know? Man, I'd be tight. Bad luck. He got bad luck like, right Yo, now. remember this song? <laughs> I'd have brought it up <laughs> we again. Were supposed to do. This is bringing it up again, though. It, oh, you're right. You yeah, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. Somebody from that team is probably like, oh, you know, Benny the Butcher was just talking about you and he's still waiting. Okay. Yeah, it can happen. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris Rock had called the cops. A man tried to film him, he said, from his fire escape. Uh, There was a peeping Tom with the camera right outside his window. That's what he told the cops. He was reporting that it was outside his New York City home in Soho in Manhattan. I actually saw Chris Rock one day in Soho walking down the block randomly. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. I was at the store Alice and Olivia. He called 911 on Sunday night. NYPD raced over, but they said when they got there, the suspect was no Nowhere to be found. They said he fled after Chris Rock spotted him and he hopped into a white Mercedes and got away. So Mm. don't know what was going on. Imagine that. That's a violation, yo. Now, Chris Rock reported the man appeared to have a camera and that they seemed to be attempting to either film or snap pictures of him. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's such a violation. And Manhattan, it's really hard to get away with stuff like that, too. Because there's too many people that see you. Yeah. That are doing things. But the other, I guess, flip side of it is that there's so much going on, nothing looks weird. <laughs> that, now, there is a lot going on there's here. There's so much going on. You could be walking out somebody's house with a TV. Yeah, it's and like, And all okay. their belongings, that nobody's going to think anything. People going to mind their business. Yes, we going <laughs> to mind our business. <laughs> all right, now, this is a really sad story. NLE Chapa, he actually donated a brand new basketball court in Raleigh and... Apparently, that uh, court was destroyed by fire less than Mm. two weeks after it opened. So he tried to do this amazing, great deed. They did say the cause of the fire was determined to be a pile of fireworks that had been ignited in the center of the court. So Nick Walker, who is the Memphis Parks director, said the court was a total loss. He said it's very sad that this random action destroyed a new and valued community asset. Memphis Parks really appreciates the partnership and sponsorship that led to the creation of the Dream Court. And we really look forward to finding a way to get an asset of similar quality back into the Raleigh community. We've been in touch with the Lieberman Charities and NLE Chapa to express appreciation and support for the community. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, they're uh, doing uh, 120 Dream Courts around the country. Mm. So the Dream Court logo is the centerpiece and you know, and early Chapa is always trying to do things to help out, mm-hmm. to help out the community. He seems like he gives back a lot. 
All right. Well, that is your Yee-T. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. But, you know, they're just as important. And we want to make sure that you are aware. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Check the news. I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Angela. Happy Wednesday. I love that you dance to whatever music is playing. <laughs> I do. I'm like, what's going on? I do. I'm trying to stay up. All right. Well, New- way up. Way uh, New up. York residents have been urged to stay indoors. There's unhealthy air quality. And I can vouch for that. I was outside walking here. I couldn't stop coughing today. And it's mm-hmm. very smoggy out. In New York State, they're warning residents to avoid being outdoors because of the potential health risk that could persist. New York City has the world's worst air pollution of any major city during parts of Tuesday. There's heavy smoke from more than 100 wildfires that have been burning north of the Canadian border that have drifted south. So it's an alarming air quality. And they are saying, please limit your outdoor activity. And also they have issued an air quality health advisory. Okay. You can definitely tell the difference here in New York right now. Yeah, New York City public schools, they canceled all outdoor activities today. And, um, you know, schools are still open. But Mm -hmm. as far as being outside, no. Yep. Got to be careful. Yeah. I've never experienced something like this. This is my first time. I'm used to dealing with pollution on a daily basis, but (laughs) not to this level. And there's some advice for if you have kids, you have to be even more concerned or, you know, infants and stuff. So Yeah, check your local air quality levels. You can go to airnow.gov. Okay. All right. And children are very susceptible to changes in air quality. Their lungs are still growing, so they breathe in a lot of air relative to their body size. Yeah. Another story in Hawaii, uh, there is a terminal used by Southwest Hawaii flights at a Honolulu airport, and they're saying bed bugs Eesh. have been an issue. Last week, they reported the bugs had made a home at the E gates in Terminal 2. At first, they thought that they could easily rectify the situation, just remove what the things are that were attracting the bed bugs, but wasn't so easy. They actually had to dispatch a staff and start deep cleaning and carpet removal. Then an exterminator was summoned to apply pest controls. The gates were closed temporarily, but they're saying this bed bug removal process will be ongoing for three weeks. Wow. Yeah. Bed bugs are no joke. Yeah. Because they spread really quickly and it's hard to get rid of them and then they get on your clothes. Yeah. They said people bring them in with their luggage and that's how they kind of spread in terms of the airline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And previously, American Airlines had a bed bug infestation on one of their fleets. And that's an uproar. Imagine, I don't know if anybody's ever been bitten by a bed bug before, but I've seen bed bug bites. Okay. And it is disgusting. Crew members were bitten on this flight and the use of insecticides was severe and that caused some more issues. At one point um, on American Airlines, the flight attendants union said we've received countless reports this week from concerned flight attendants who have experienced various health issues after using crew bunks on our wide body fleet. And so bed bugs do become an issue. Okay. Well, how do we avoid? What are we supposed to do so that this doesn't happen? Well, don't bring luggage directly into your home. Mm. They said initially leave your bags in the garage or a sealed plastic bag or bin. Okay. Uh, heat the luggage and its contents. Hmm. For example, if you put the bags in a black trash bag in the sun or purchase luggage with a heater, which they do have those available, or okay. you can buy a luggage heater, bed bugs can't live in high heat. So if you heat your clothes and your uh, contents of that bag, then you'll eliminate them. Also, wash your clothes immediately after a trip using in the hot cycle or uh, the alternative is the opposite freeze the contents of your bags that'll also kill the bugs and then when you have to you can use hot soapy water and a scrub brush to remove bed bug eggs and bugs oh. themselves oh. also use a flashlight and look for their presence they're live moving bed bugs they're tan red or brown oh my goodness do you do any of these things well that's only if there's um bed bugs like there's some type of fear but uh, this is how to av- but what what you listed is how to avoid them so i feel like we should be doing something every time we travel no, no i don't do these I, I don't do any of these things yeah. but one thing i don't like that people do is do not put no uh, bags on, on your, your bed. bed i know you're going to say oh yeah i don't like that god, either oh my god i see this on tv shows and movies <laughs> if you put a duffel bag that you've had on the floor mm-hmm. or a suitcase on your bed that is disgusting have you ever had bed bugs no, angela i have not I mean, let me get the question out i'm itching right now just thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> have you not that I know of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like you would know it, right? 
Yeah, I okay. think you would be. You have bites. Okay. If you ever see what it looks like when somebody's had bed bug bites, just look up a picture. Okay. All right. We also have the weight up mix coming at the top of the hour, and as we told you earlier, Caroline Wanga is going to be joining us. She is the CEO and president of Essence Ventures. Okay. That includes the Essence Fest, which is coming up. Oh yeah. Also Afropunk, also Beautycon, also Essence Studios. We'll be having a conversation with her today. But right now, we're mm-hmm. talking about bed bugs. Ooh, if you ever had them. <laughs> 800-292. No. I don't know why he asked it. Oh, I thought you were just saying to ask that. I was like, why is he asking that? All right. Well, you can always also hit us up on social media at Way Up With Ye. Okay. That's on Twitter and on Instagram. And weigh in with your bed bug stories. Yee. I want to hear them. I'm itching. It's Way Up With Angela Yee. <laughs> way Up. <laughs> She's like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. Yes, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine Brand is here. I'm here, Angela. And this is your thing right here, yes, right? Yes, the it JasmineBrand.com is. is an entertainment site, mm-hmm. and we got some entertaining things for you. And Angela also works for me, too. Oh, that's right. Yes. Let's not forget that. <laughs> All right, now, Doughboy is thanking J-Lo and Ja Rule for clearing the sample. They said he begged for a year, for mm. 12 months, in order for them to sign off on sampling the uh, Way I Walk for, the, for his new track, The Way I Walk. Now, right here is what Doughboy had to say. Thank you, J-Lo. I appreciate it. The begging your ass for a year. Finally made it happen. Ain't nothing a little money I can't get done. Yeah, yeah, understand me? Oh, yeah, shout out Ja Rule, too. Came through clutch for a That was gangster. I respect it. That was his song, I'm Real. So I guess his song, Way I Walk. I'm his album comes real. out on, on um, Friday, on okay. June 9th. Persistence. He was very persistent. And patient. Yes. You got to have patience. So get ready for that album. He actually just did lip service, too. And that uh, interview came out last week. Mm-hmm. And he has a song with Dej Loaf. That's an amazing track. And Dej Loaf doesn't, hasn't been doing features prior to that. Here's what he had to say about it. You just put out a new song, Roll the Dice, with Dej Loaf. Dej Loaf has not really done any features recently. Yeah. How did that happen? Collabing with Dej was always like on my bucket list. Like when I was in jail, I used to listen to her her project, The um, to Sell Soul. Mm-hmm. I used to listen to it all the time. I'm like, man, she's so hard. But when I came home, she like started falling back a little bit. Right. And I'm like, man, damn, I got to get to her though. Mm-hmm. And then it was just one day I'm like, hey, look here, hold on. I got something <laughs> for you. And I sent her the song. I sent her the roll of dice. She literally sent the song back in 30 minutes. That's a good feeling. That is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Dad, we can't wait to hear some some new Dej Loaf. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for her. All right, now, G Herbo, it looks like he and Taina have broken up his fiance. He posted on social media, I'm single yesterday on his Instagram story. So okay. I'm not sure what led to this uh, breakup, but I saw he was trending mm-hmm. because of it. And people were definitely uh, blaming him for all of this. <laughs> we don't know what's going on, but we blame you. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea what happened, but... Um, people are like, bro, fix your family. <laughs> ain't ish out here. God ain't going to keep sending you good women. Uh, Another said, boy, if you don't go back home and help put your babies to bed. Because uh, they do have, he has two children with Taina, Yeah, right? Taina. Okay. And okay. then, of course, he has one, one with, with Ari. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All yeah. right. Now, Dominique Fishback says that in Transformers, the uh, there was a stunt that she did that could have been very bad. She was at the New York City premiere of Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Mm-hmm. And she said, there's a part where I'm supposed to go down into a cave. I had a harness on and the guy is holding it the director wanted me to step down without looking so that the camera could get more in my face before i descended into the cave but i missed the step and i <gasps> fell back <sighs> you okay <laughs> that sounds scary i was imagining it go ahead <laughs> yeah so she said the um what she ended up doing there with that missing that step didn't even make it in the final film she said it's not in there but the, the guy had to grab the rope to make sure i didn't fall so it could have been <gasps> very bad that's scary that is so scary when you were reading it that's why i was like <gasps> <laughs> I, could, I could picture the whole thing. And Dominic Fishback and Anthony Ramos co- co-star in the new Transformers movie. And they're both from Brooklyn. Yeah, they, they did Brooklyn Zone. Yeah, Brooklyn Zone. And that's in theaters on Friday as okay. well. Are we gonna, when are we going to go see that, Angela? Um... I'm down. I want to see it like ASAP. Okay. All I right. would like to see it. We, we might need to pre-buy them tickets, though. I know. I know. And speaking of the uh, Transformers uh, pre- uh, premiere, mm-hmm. Pete Davidson was there. And he was talking about that... Um, <laughs> Remember he bought that ferry, the Staten Island Ferry? Yeah, what was that about? Well, he told Entertainment Tonight while he was at the New York City premiere of Transformers, he said he has no idea what's going on with that (laughs) ferry. He said, me and Colin were stoned a year ago and bought a ferry and we're figuring it out. (laughs) (laughs) So they don't even know what's going on with this ferry. They, um, you know, he's from Staten Island 
and they had plans to create a restaurant, a bar, and entertainment space on the boat that people could visit while it was docked. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that can even happen. And so they don't know. Have you ever bought something uh, while you were high, a purchase you regret it? Not a boat. <laughs> That's some rich, rich. Be a small purchase, right. like a sweater. Like, <laughs> what about a sweater? Like some shoes. <laughs> and I see that uh, Gloria Govan is having some legal issues as well. Right. Now, I was on... Um, on social media and I saw on the neighborhood talk that she could find herself in jail. Mm. She has to pay this default judgment that's owed to Matt Barnes. She actually ended up having to pay for uh, court fees and everything. Mm. And so now that sum is $137,000. And so if she doesn't pay that bill, she could end up going to jail on a default judgment. They seem to still be having some issues with each other. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, that is your UT. And when we come back, we're going to talk about this. I was knocked out yesterday. Right. But there was a period of time in my life when I could not sleep for anything. Mm, and, I bet. and even when I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning every day, I would just be up all night. And we're going to talk about what time you fall asleep and what that means when it comes to your health. Mm, okay. It's way up with Angela Yee. Now I'm back, back, back. Now I'm back. Get it. You vibe the way up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Yes. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. Thank you. And yesterday I had a long day. Okay. Like, came to work, Mm -hmm. and I honestly did not. I had to go deal with some things with my brownstone in Brooklyn. Uh Uh-huh. I was there for hours, and I had a Zoom. Then I came to meet you. Right. So I didn't get home till probably, like, let me see. Ten? Yeah, like around 10, 10 30 at night. Okay. Um, so I fell and fell asleep immediately, passed out, right? Can I just say something really quick? Mm-hmm. The thing is, you have obviously you have like fifty jobs. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. And then you have like other uh responsibilities. responsibilities. Yes. A lot a lot of them. <laughs> yes. Some of them are people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have some other responsibilities too, but not as many as you you have your own business i do all right so they're saying here now yesterday when i tell you i fell asleep i tried to pull out my laptop and do a little work Mm -hmm. i I just said forget it it's not happening and according to studies uh, going to sleep really quickly isn't always a good thing and Mm. taking too long is also not a good thing okay so what is that sweet spot right because sometimes you have so much going on in your head you end up laying in bed just thinking yeah and you can't sleep tossing and turning that's definitely happened to me right um both things have happened to me so the time it takes for you to go to sleep is clinically called sleep latency and there's no set normal or healthy amount of time that it should take but there are some guideposts okay that you should follow so they said according to the national sleep foundation it should take about 15 to 20 minutes for a healthy person 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Now, people with health conditions, it can take 30 to 40 minutes. But they said it's good to spend the half hour before bed winding ourselves down uh, while we're awake and do kind of a night bedtime routine. So Mm. they have different things uh, that you can be doing to make sure that it's a routine. But falling asleep within a half an hour is a good goal. Okay. And if you fall asleep right when your head hits the pillow, it's not necessarily a cause for concern overall. But it could mean that something is going on. It could mean that you simply need more sleep. Mm -hmm. That was my life yes for a long long for period years, of time uh-huh, uh-huh. and there would be times that i would take a 10 minute nap i would set my alarm for 10 minutes because i needed a quick nap so quickly but that can be a sign of exhaustion a sign that we're overworking ourselves a sign of burnout a sign that we're not spending enough time recovering and resting mm-hmm. and it may mean that you're not sleeping long enough and you're getting that quote-unquote junk sleep that's not enough for you to feel well rested and nourished Nourished. I like that word. Nourished. Mm -hmm. Um, Another reason they said that it's really important uh, uh, to know this, uh, you could have a mental health condition. Mm. It can be a side effect of medication or caused by mental health diagnosis such as depression. So depression may make you sleepy, but so do certain antidepressants. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I I took something before. It used to, as soon as I would take it, it would put me right to sleep. It was like for uh, depression. All right. Also, sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. That's very common in older adults. It's a chronic sleep disorder. I know people who have that that have to sleep with that machine over their face. Yes. That's where your upper airway is completely or partially obstructed during sleep, leading to a decrease in oxygen content. That leads to sleep fragmentation. So you're always like waking up. Mm. And you can notice this if you're fatigued during the day, if you're having some problems understanding things, your cognitive dysfunction. So they advise a regular sleep schedule and to quit smoking if you smoke. All right. And Hmm. if you fall asleep slowly, 
That's the other side of the coin. Okay. And that could be a symptom of insomnia, chronic pain, a psychological or medical condition. That could mean that your sleep routine isn't the best. You have an inconsistent bedtime. I noticed that even when I know on the weekend, I still will wake up around the same time. Yeah, I wake up around the same time every day. Uh, you could feel emotional or stressed that can uh, make you just be up all night. Right. Uh, they said distress, anxiety, and other emotional concerns can trigger insomnia by leading to an overactive sympathetic nervous system. So make sure you see a medical provider because sleep is so important. That's it's, why my mm-hmm. mattress is important to me. <laughs> yes. You know, and... Um, well, the, the bed I sleep on in your... Um place is very comfortable all that's, your places have comfortable beds for me that's a savoir mattress <laughs> yeah shout out to savoir beds it's nice i'll tell it's you that it's very nice very very nice but i do believe in investing in the right mattress because you don't want to wake up all sore your body hurts see i don't or you can't sleep you're tossing and turning you can feel them the wires i've had those too you can feel the coils i've had those i don't really invest in, like i should into the mattress situation yes yeah see, but it's important it, make it happen mm-hmm. all right well um when we come back we have caroline wanga joining us she's the ceo CEO and president of Essence Ventures. That includes the Essence Music Festival, the publication Essence. Mm -hmm. That includes Afropunk. That includes Beautycon. Beautycon. That includes Essence Studios. And I can't wait for you guys to hear what she has to say. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back. Way Up with Angela Yee is on. Yes, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine from the Jasmine Brand is here. Yes, I'm here, Angela. Hi. You're Hi. here. Yeah. And Caroline Wanga is about to be joining us. She is the president and CEO of Essence Ventures. Mm-hmm. That's Essence Fest. Yes. Essence Magazine. Yes. Essence, uh, the Beauty Beautycon. Con. Mm-hmm. And Afropunk. Yes. And Essence Studios. Essence Studios. That sounds exciting. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be fun because mm-hmm. I actually go to Essence Fest every single year. Mm-hmm. I've also been to Afropunk quite a few times. I've never been to Afropunk. I took my goddaughter one year. She really, really wanted to go. Let's try to go this year. Okay. It's in Brooklyn. It's actually kind of the same weekend as Angela Yee Day, so oh, I'm trying to figure goodness. that we out. We gotta figure that out, Angela. Yeah, we gotta figure that out because, yeah. you know, I want to be able to do it all. Yes. But sometimes we cannot do it all, okay? Yeah. Okay. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, and shout out to my coffee company, Coffee Uplifts People. I got a lot of things that I need to handle with that. Mm-hmm. But that's been going well. You know, it's, it's having a business and being a small business owner is not easy. I'm trying to figure some things out right now. And, um, and for those who don't know, it's in Brooklyn. Uh, the coffee shop is in Brooklyn, but mm-hmm. the coffee is available at, at several online. different places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, online, coffeeuplistpeople.com. Well. Yeah. So if you're a coffee drinker, I haven't drank coffee my whole life. Right. So I'm newer to this, but I actually have it every day now, pretty much. Yeah, I have, and you you make a little for me every day, too. And I have a, a coffee machine. I have a nice DeLonghi you machine. You got a nice coffee machine. In my home. Mm-hmm. And I like to actually, here's a little thing I do. I like to make my um, coffee with actually chocolate oat milk. Yes. And it's delicious like that. And sometimes we add a little something in there, too. Sometimes a little Bailey's. You know. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to keep it going. But Caroline Wanga is joining us. And I actually did a whole uh, coffee ceremony at Essence Fest last year. Oh. So let's talk about what's happening this year. In case you've never been, you're going to love this conversation. But if you have been and every single year you go and you're dedicated to it like I am, you're going to love this conversation. Caroline Wanga, CEO and president of Essence Ventures. When we come back, it's way up. With Angela Yee. Back. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back. Way up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the JasmineBrand.com is here. Yes. And we have a very special guest. The epitome of what it is that we try to talk about up here on Way Up with Angela Yee. Caroline Wanga is here with us. Hey, hey. Yes, hey, you, hey. you are the president and chief executive officer of Essence Ventures. I am. And you also have your own Wanga woman, too. I do. I do. So can you talk about Essence Ventures for people? Because we yeah. think of Essence Festival, we think of the magazine. Yes. But there are other ventures, too. Too. Yeah. That's why it's Essence Adventures. Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations, sis. This is <laughs> this is so dope. We've done this before, but I couldn't be more honored to be with you here. I'm super proud of what you're doing and what you continue you. to do and who it inspires. So I'm honored to be here. And Jasmine, I'm honored to be here with you as well. So let's talk about Essence Ventures, right? So here's the way that I would have you think about it. There are a series of companies that sit under this brand called Essence Ventures and when you tie them together the goal is to really create a frictionless and boundaryless 
black economic engine. Mm -hmm. So what it includes is Essence Communications, which is the festival and the magazine and Black Women in Hollywood and all these activations that everybody knows. What also sits with underneath me now as a part of the group is BeautyCon. So people may remember oh, the brand BeautyCon. I know that's right. Remember, yes. remember that? I lived in LA for a while. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So most people, like, BeautyCon has a heck of a following and had been dormant for a couple years. Yeah. We acquired that. I, I was that. wondering what happened Yeah, we Econ. acquired Beauty that Con's last a summer. Big deal. Yeah, yeah okay. so we acquired that last summer. In fact, we're doing, this week, we're doing a, a media day to talk about the relaunch of that. So we will be relaunching BeautyCon this year. We've I already got a couple yeah. of events on the calendar for this year as it is. What also sits within there is Afropunk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Afropunk is a long-standing brand that my definition of is it has always been the safest place for black that's on the margin. Meaning folks that have interest in things that may not have been acceptable in black community may have been different, whether it be heavy metal, gamers, Comic-Con, all of that. But at the end of the day, Afropunk is, is the part of our portfolio that stands anti-anything, right? Anti-homophobia, anti racism anti right and really has represented how we make sure that the full spectrum of what it means to be black because it's not a monolith right. is seen and heard equitably and it's one of my absolute favorite communities but then the fourth brand is essence studios which is our own production house it basically became what saved our business during the pandemic it became a streaming platform for the festival where we have 45 million views 65 million views the next year and so now what we're doing is really reinventing what studios is going to be to help fill in where our portfolio needs more focus on particular black segments to be able to drive forward but that's what essence ventures is sheesh that's a lot we gotta have yeah. you come up for each different i mean <laughs> i mean and, and i and i have to sleep different segments to go through <laughs> right. reading each of them but it's a beautiful combination of something that as we continue to refine it will really 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 continue to do our part to strengthen black in terms of community black in terms of value black in terms of culture black in terms of capital and all of that is is only good and is there's never good. a question for essence fest to be in New Orleans, right? The, 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 listen, you know, and I have to tell <laughs> we people love New Orleans, because though. they don't understand that this mouse is the horse's mouth. So the horse's mouth said, we're never leaving New Orleans. When you look at what the people that participate in the festival do for the city of New Orleans, yeah. you understand what would be different if we left. We're talking about an annual impact, meaning every year of $327 million a year that we pump straight into New Orleans, whether that be taxes, whether that be lodging, whether that be flights. We're talking about what we do to create 3,600 jobs locally. Like, forget us coming in and having a good time and spending our money. We are an economy mm -hmm. for, for New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. And what we can't do is abandon that for aesthetic. We're talking to Caroline Wanga, the CEO and president of Essence. Well, now, I know you saw Juvenile. How Essence going to be honoring 50 years of hip-hop in New Orleans without including me? That's crazy, huh? See, you chose violence today. <laughs> When we saw today. that, we were like, "Where oh. is the brown liquor? <laughs> Where is the brown?" Liquor? Okay, so listen, listen, listen. Please address it. We, I'm, I'm gonna address it head on. <laughs> Let me be really clear, right? So one of the things we changed within the festival is that we used to have like a theme each year. Like last year was a black joy for me. We came and visited and talked with that. As we are doing this evolution of the festival, we made an intentional decision to not necessarily stick to try to come up with a theme because it makes everything dramatic. But instead, look at what are black cultural moments that are happening that are relevant that we want to tap into. And because this was the 50th anniversary of hip hop, of course, we like it. So are we. So we made a decision to celebrate the 50 years of hip hop and started to source talent and have conversations with talent. Right. And there is no way in hell that we were not going to have any NOLA artists okay. be a part of this damn festival. Now, we have always created a festival that had some things announced and some things as surprise. So there will be surprise and delight moments that feature some NOLA talent that I ain't going to say To be the great about, baby. Right? <laughs> Mia X was already on there as we talk about the, you know, what we want to do with, with the FEMCs, right? The female MCs. I saw Angie but Martinez also, is hosting Angie that. Angie Martinez is hosting years, that. But so. also, mm -hmm. part of my commitment in this new era of essence was to be engaged with the local New Orleans community authentically. So on Monday, we've added an event that we started last year, which is the Family Day and the Block Party. That entire roster is all New Orleans talent from across the musical spectrum of New Orleans. So whether or not a particular individual was on a roster is different from we don't care about NOLA artists. Right. Okay. okay. So that's the way that I'll address it. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad we put it out there right away because, yep. but that's how passionate... And watch Juvenile's social handles if you want to know more. We're talking to Caroline Wanga, the CEO and president of Essence.
Now let's talk about you. Yes. For a second. <laughs> because just you having this role yeah. at Essence and the way you started, you came in and then within a month you became the CEO. Mm-hmm. Yep, that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, came in <laughs> under whole Talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's discuss yeah. for yourself just having to put all of this together and being on the front lines of everything and yeah. Clearly, some things have to change because you're bringing your own vision yeah. and trying to see what needs to evolve into yeah. a different space. How has that been for you? Because that's not easy. I saw an article. <sighs> We're doing this one. Huh? Where you talked okay. about five yeah. failures. Allow yourself yeah. five failures a day. If yeah. you get to six, there's a problem. <laughs> or you get to six, you just be like, it was bad. Let me go to sleep. Tomorrow. Yeah, like hit reset. But so how, was it, how has it been for you? I, I sincerely appreciate the question because I took the opportunity to come to this brand as an act of service. And what I mean by that is like, this thing does not belong to me or to you. Like it belongs to the community. I came into a whole bunch of stuff. But what I think is most important to understand is the business was not healthy because of how it had been treated within Time Inc. And the work to rebuild that business was a lot financially, was a lot culturally. But the level to which there was missed moments and missed information and and where hurt people had hurt people and all of that, the volume of it was much louder than I understood it to be before (laughs) I came in. The beauty is my prior role was working in creating inclusive environments and listening. And so as much as I was worried about not coming from the media space, I ended up needing the skills that I had in my last job to just listen. And be honest about the fact that we've taken all of this in and we're now going to decide where we're going to go. But then I would say the mantle is heavy and some of that is self-inflicted. And I don't know that I was fully prepared. And so I think there were moments in especially that first year where I just had to sit down and go, do you still want to? You now know the weight of the mantle. You get to decide. And every time I got into one of those moments, the answer was yes. And so to be able to go through that and then now have these other brands sitting with me and to see where we are as a business, we've had a 260% increase in profitability in three years. We've increased our team by 36%. We've increased salaries by 47%. Like every day that I said yes with this team is manifesting in a way that is even beyond what I could imagine. And so the days are still hard. But the progress that has been proven on behalf of our community is the thing that keeps me fueled with the teams that we work with and the partners like y'all and the family that that continue to help this thing shine. Numbers don't lie. They don't lie at all. And on the days where I get to the sixth fail, we just end the day and start again tomorrow. (laughs) Like, okay. Yep. Caroline Wonga is here with us. We are gearing up for Essence Fest. But let's not forget, Essence is more than just a festival. We'll talk more about that when we come back. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Way up with Angela Yee. It's also, it's also a Wealth Wednesday. Let's not forget that. And we are talking about somebody who has some of the cheat codes for you guys who have your own businesses. Or maybe you want to come out and join us for Essence Fest this year. We have Caroline Wanga, the CEO and president of Essence. Let's talk about this lineup a little. Come on, let's that's talk about this for me. Camp. This all right. lineup, yes. Because, I mean, honestly, first of all, a lot of women on here. I and mean, I, see I mean. Angie is also going to be doing 50 yes. Years of Women yes. in Hip Hop. Yeah. I know there's going to be some amazing surprises. There are, there are. When it comes to that, but headline is Missy Elliott. Yes. Miss Lauren Hill. Come on. Megan Thee Stallion. Come on. Jill Scott is going to be there. Yes. Uh, Trina, that's yes. your favorite, Jasmine. Yes, I love. Tr- Come I love- on. Her Listen, favorite song of all we time. We all love Trina. <laughs> by Trina. Come on. <laughs> That was an anthem. That's the theme. <laughs> that was an anthem. <laughs> and you said Mia X, Remy Ma, yeah. Eve, yes. Salt and Pepper. Yes. Salt and Pepper. Yeah. Ooh. And Spinderella is a DJ. Yes. That's right. On yeah. Sunday. All of the songs. Lady All of Rage here. is going to be there. Yes. I remember her. I yes. mean, that's amazing that yeah. you have the most amazing women as far as hip-hop artists. Yeah. Ari Lennox, who we absolutely love. Money Long, Thames. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Everybody coming outside. So talk to me about the whole process like yeah. of how something like this comes together. Who was the first person that you like, we book around? this you know I would love to tell you this beautiful organized story <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you how it actually happens it right because we real out here what we had decided was that we were gonna lean into the field. when you are a festival that's been around for 29 years people get worried about who you're gonna put on your roster and so there may be organizations out there that try to block particular town from mm. the Florida Joe festival competition hey it's the highest form of flattery it, and you got to make an exclusivity contract so you can't come perform about I never festival. thought about that kind of re- stuff oh yeah baby okay come on we 29 years old yeah okay. all these other ones is new Okay. So in order to continue to win against us, you got to cheat. So uh, you cheat with exclusivity to contracts to cut people off. So I say that because one of the first things was who's available, right? Yeah, who's a, that is hard. We can't move our date. 
Like our date is the 4th of July weekend. You know, other festivals mm-hmm. may have a date, but they can play maybe within a week. It's 4th of July weekend. Yeah, that's, date right? is that's date. when we do yeah. it. And so availability has to be there. Then we went down the path of how do we make sure that there's a multi-generational representation, mm-hmm. right? And so it was really about that. And then just like we said about hip hop, we looked at what are some cool moments that this year represents. And so it happened to be the 25th anniversary of uh, the miseducation Ooh, of Lauren Hill. So exciting. Missy gets into the Rock and oh Roll Hall gosh. of Fame. And then when we look at Megan the Stallion, like we had Nicki Minaj last year, Megan is killing it out yeah, here. Yeah, she is. And, and, and so really, it became really a matter of just reverse engineering into what makes sense on headliners. I know from a hip hop perspective, we were also really passionate about having regional representation mm-hmm. and making sure that it wasn't the hip hop of any one area that was kind of leading. And so that's what kind of led to these curations. And then we looked at what do we want to do differently with how we host we've had many different host pieces and so we looked at comedians this year we're talking to caroline wanga the ceo and president of essence and as far as wanga women yes right? yeah so because so, i always think it's important to have yeah. your own personal brand yes as well in what you yeah. and what you do so yeah. can you just give us i'll give you a brief some wanga woman yeah information so, so wanga woman was born out of the way that i was choosing to talk about how purpose played a role in my life and really how shedding what was a way of operating that wasn't authentic to who I was changed the trajectory of my career, my life, my finances. And so we founded Wanga Woman really out of demand. Mm -hmm. People wanted us to come and talk more about how do you weaponize authenticity for your own good. The mission of Wanga Woman is to democratize authenticity by helping people find their purpose. Um, Yes, it comes with speaking opportunities, but there's courses and other things that are literally just based on what I did to find myself because the personal mission in it for me is it took me so long having been a mom at 17 and being stuck at that failure for almost 18 years and not seeing what I'd done and and operating apologetically and people renegotiated my potential without my permission and a whole bunch of other stuff. I was so stuck there for almost 20 years. And when I finally unlocked who I was and looked back to fix my life, my psychological birthdays and all that stuff, I got so angry that it took so long that my mission became getting people to get to that place sooner so they can have funner sooner Mm. and so the mission is simply to democratize authenticity by getting people connected to their purpose so that they can start to activate their purpose in the world because I believe that everybody has a purpose that's uniquely theirs and if they don't go after it the world goes without so we say who you are is who you are if you can't be who you are where you are you change where you are not who you are Y'all better connect. Okay. Come I want to get some fun sooner. I, yeah. I like that. I mean, too. right. Because then, like, there's a cornucopia of fun and excitement for you. On <laughs> yeah, other side I of like this. that. Yeah. Well, Dr. Wanga. Uh, <laughs> my mother's Talk about gonna, it. <laughs> Talk about it. My mama's going to be so proud Talk of Talk about it. Dr. My mama, Wanga, thank you. you know, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. For coming through. She got her doctorate from um, Dillard, Dillard University. Yeah, it was in my New second one. Yeah, your second yeah. one. So. For my mama. That's for my mom and daddy who I told I'd never be a doctor. And now they're like, I'm like, that's fine. Celebrate. You can have that. Yeah, yeah. I'm a double doc. Double doc. I'm Dr. a double Square. doc. Yeah. All but right. Thank you. Where can people go to find information? Essencefestival.com. Pay attention mm-hmm. to our social, our social for things like the app and other things that we'll be dropping soon. And if nothing else, y'all be in my DMs. You know how to find me. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's way up with Angelique, Caroline, Dr. Caroline Wonga. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you, loves. All right. Well, coming up next, we do have Ask Ye. 800 292 5150 is a number. We are here to help. Me and Jasmine Brand are here on Way Up with Angela Ye. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know, you should know. This is SD. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Yes. And it is time for Ask Yee. And I've been doing this segment for a long time. Mm-hmm. Just trying to help people out, give them advice. So today we have Zakovia on the line. Hey, Zakovia. Oh my gosh. Hey, Angela. <laughs> Hi, how are you, girl? Oh, good. Hang in there. How so, about you? I'm I'm doing good too. Thank you for asking. I appreciate you. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. <laughs> so what's your what is your ask ye question today? Um, so I have two boys. Mm-hmm. He one is four, and my other one will be three tomorrow. And I feel like I'm like dealing with depression kind of real bad at this point because. I can't work because we don't have any family support enough to watch the kids. Mm-hmm. Me and dad, like, we're together. He's working. But, like, in the meantime, I'm dealing with my own stress and, like, having to be under the pressure of all the responsibility as a mom. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. 
I get kind of like stressed out and I get mad and I sometimes take it out on him in a wrong way or I don't know how to express it. Mm-hmm. How do I not let this, like what I'm going through, how do I not let it put our relationship in turmoil? Like how do I not let it affect us? Okay. Well, I think it feels like you need to do some things for yourself at times to make your because at least you're acknowledging the fact that like you know how you've been feeling and I do also want to point out that I don't know if you have postpartum but there it could last for years yeah it could last longer than you think so it could also be that Mm -hmm. as part of it but also having kids is not an easy thing I hear your cuties in the background right now (laughs) (laughs) and I just feel like you know it also could be I know people who have had kids and the husband or uh, the father works and sometimes it's difficult to be in the house with yeah. the children and not be around other adults during the day mm-hmm. and right. you know so I know that's difficult too and I, I feel like it's time for you to do some things that you need to handle for yourself Sokovia like have you been making sure that you go outside that you go for walks I go outside and oh, of course they always gotta be right behind me but right. I mean I do try to like get some air and things like that mm-hmm. and then I try to like you know, talk to myself like not in a crazy way, but I like I talk, thinking out loud. Don't worry, I talk to myself all the time. So she talks to herself in front, in, in front of us. Stop. <laughs> yes, and sometimes it makes me feel like like I'm like it makes me feel better. Mm-hmm. But then I kind of backtrack because then when I get around him, I just be like I'm just not good enough. No, not at all. Do you get to see your friends and family? Do you are you able to do that? Do you do you have time to do that? Do you ever have time away from the kids to be able to enjoy yourself? I really don't. Like every time I go somewhere arriving, they're like right in the car. Like they're like my little broke best friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. But like you, but Angel, like you're saying, I know that it's really hard. But you're gonna have to try to figure out a small period, a window of time where you can be by yourself without your kids. Yeah, and then uh, the worst one of the worst scenario case scenarios that came up like last night, I caught him sliding up on his ex's snap. Uh, okay. okay. And then so now I just feel like I'm unraveling because it feels like it's kind of my fault or what did I do to make you feel like you gotta do that? Mm-mm. Right. And you know men, and you know men, they don't like to like take time with they don't like it. They don't like to feel like they owe your explanation at all. Right. Yeah, I think it's important for you to let him know how you feel without blaming yourself or blaming him. It's how you feel. And part of it could be postpartum. I wouldn't outrule that because that's definitely a real thing. Uh, Part of it is that you need to do some things for yourself to make yourself happy. Like what are things that you can do? Uh, Who can you see? Is there family you can go with? Can you make sure if other people have kids, can you have a play date so you can have some more adult interaction with people outside of your relationship? Because sometimes it is unfair to burden our significant other with the issues that we're having. Right. Right. And you need to find somebody else that you can communicate with. And that could even be, you know, you can have some time for some online therapy. You know, we use BetterHelp up Mm -hmm. here and that definitely um, helps us as well. But, you know, even you acknowledging this, I think you need to make some active things. You know, how can do you have anybody that can watch the kids? Can he watch the kids while maybe you have a girls night out or a family time or just even a few hours or even some time by yourself to go to the spa get a facial do what you need to do yeah. get a massage right. you know to make yourself feel better how can you make that happen what what city are you in right I am calling you from Fairfax, South Carolina. Okay. South Carolina, okay. We can probably do something for you and set something up, but I just want you to take some time because, you know, I feel like you're blaming yourself for this but it's really the two of you because he has to just like you're understanding what how difficult it must be for him he has to understand how difficult it is for you and you're working too you're mm-hmm. at home with kids right and he has to realize that's a full time job yeah. that does not stop it's so it's so much and it's like I'm crying now because like it's really a lot let's get your information and let's see what we can schedule for you yeah. so that you can do some fun things or something that is more meditative for yourself so you can just regroup. Yeah. And I think for you and him, you know, it's not going to help for him to be on his ex and for you to feel like that's your fault and you drove him to that. That's not true. We just go fight him, Angela. We can go fight him and then... No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Never mind. But she wants to make her relationship work. We can and, still fight him, And though. part of that is <laughs> communicating and also coming up with some solutions on how you guys yeah. can move forward together, how he can be helpful in your journey as a mom who never has to stop working right 
you know. So hold on, let's figure out some things that you can do in the immediate, so that you, and then let's get some long term solutions. I think there's a short term solution we can do, yeah. So you can feel happier right now, but let's make sure this is a constant work that we're going to be doing. Yep. Day by day. Oh my gosh, I love that. All right, hold on, okay, Zakovia. Yeah. Okay. All right. 800-292-5150 is a number. It's Ask Yee. And when we come back, we have last words. And if y'all have any advice to definitely hit us up. Yeah. Let know, her know she's not, she's not alone yeah, at she's all. not alone because I can imagine. And Jasmine, you're a new mom. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been saying you're a new mom for two years yeah. now. You don't want to tell me I had postpartum, though. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's okay. All right. It's way up with Angela Yee. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from thejasminebrand.com is here with me today. This was a great day. Yeah. We're both a little coffee and tired. I feel like <laughs> there is all this fog and um, pollution. Did you say coffee and tired? Yeah, coffee. Oh, okay. Like cough. Oh, coughing. Yeah, like coughish. I made up a word. I was, okay, because I'm drinking coffee, so I was kind of confused. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I meant cough. Got it. Yeah, we are. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a weird situation in terms of the air outside. Yeah, the New pollution York. is really really bad right yeah. now, all because of these wildfires in Canada. I can't believe that it's affecting us. Can you, it's a lot of stuff during our lifetime we've experienced. This is kind of unique. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Climate change is a real thing too. A hundred percent. All right. So um, I want to thank everybody for listening today. Thank you to Caroline Wanga for joining us. She is the CEO and president of Essence Ventures. Yes. We are gearing up for Essence Music Festival. That is actually coming up at the end of this month into July. Oh, it is. Yeah. So that's kind of soon. The summer is is, is already taken away. Yeah, it's here. Yeesh. It's happening. It is. Also, thank you to everybody who calls for Tell Us a Secret. We appreciate yeah. you guys. Some of y'all are dirtbags, but we do appreciate you. <laughs> it takes a lot. Even though it's anonymous, I do feel like it takes a lot to kind of actually say out loud your secret. Yeah. We're not here to co-sign you either. Make We're you feel not. Better. But we We're really just, are like, listen. Uh, 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 yeah. And, you know, some of y'all want to go viral. <laughs> and you do. <laughs> But you can always leave a message, 800-292-5150, in case you don't get through for Tell Us a Secret or for Shine a Light. Mm -hmm. That's always positive. And I love Shine a Light. I love how we start the show with that, yeah. with people shouting out other people, sometimes yourself. Sometimes you need to shine a light on yourself because we all do go through a lot and we need to acknowledge that and appreciate mm -hmm. what it is that we have going on. So thank you guys. We appreciate you so much. It is a Wealth Wednesday, so make sure you get your finances in order. Pay your bills. Check yeah. your credit score. Pay your bills. Check your credit score think about investing and remember just because you have debt to take care of doesn't mean you can't be investing at the same time yep. i had to do that for a long period it's 50 dollars a month is yep. what i was doing mm -hmm. and it came out pre-taxes so i didn't even notice it out of my check I know that's right all right well it is way up with angela yee and as usual you guys have the last word the final say on the show 800-292-5150 Hey Angela, I wanted to let you know I hooked up with several married women and they didn't tell me they were married until after the fact. Have a good day. God bless you. My secret is that when I was in college, it was this one class that was really hard and the teacher, a white male, always just staring at me all the time. And so during office meetings to, to get help, we had sex a couple times. And then at the end of the semester, when he tried to give me less than an A, I reminded him. Yeah, listen. You vibing way up with Angela Yee.